Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. In the book of Revelation, in the midst of the prophecies and the symbols and the mysteries that are in there, some people avoid the book because they don't understand. And in the midst of all this difficulty, there's a beautiful verse The Lord says, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore, be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. the past couple of days this verse has been coming up more often and more often it's a reminder that our relationship with God and with our Lord and Savior isn't a one-way street and sometimes we think and we deal as if we're hiding or we're afraid of the Lord or we don't want him to see or that he doesn't know what we're doing or where we are, or that he doesn't know us or care. But this verse confirms for us that he is the one that makes first contact. When you knock on someone's door, you're taking a big risk because there's so many options for the person inside. They can pretend they're not there. They cannot answer. They can answer with anger. How many times have someone knocked at your door and you felt it as like a big inconvenience? I wish there wasn't anyone there. So it's a big risk to knock on someone's door. But the Lord says, I'm always knocking. And not only that, to be able to invite him in and say, come and sit and he will eat with me and I with him. The story of Zacchaeus is the story of this interaction. Because Zacchaeus was not expecting this. The gospel tells us that he was a chief tax collector. So the tax collectors had also like levels. Imagine that the chief, I'm sorry, if if the people under the chief are bad, how bad is the chief then? Because the chief sets the agenda for the whole crew. So if the chief is kind-hearted and loving, the people that are under him will be kind-hearted. But if the chief is a greedy man that only cares about money and what he's getting, then all of the tax collectors that are under him will not only be stealing for themselves, but for the chief that's above them. And the chief, traditionally, would be the one that's dealing directly with the Romans. And so his interest then becomes more important what the Romans think of him than what his own people think of him. Because this is a very lucrative job to be a tax collector and even more so to be the chief tax collector. And on his way to Jerusalem, the Lord healed, I'm sorry, on his way to Jericho, the Lord healed a blind man on his way. So there was a bustle in the city. The blind man ran towards Jericho and people were starting to get excited. It was like a messenger was sent to say that the Lord is coming and he does great works. He does great wonders. So Zacchaeus being curious as to this Lord and who this man is, wants to see him. So he climbs a sycamore tree and gets ready because the gospel says that he's short of stature. So if he was standing with the rest of the people, he's so little there's nothing. He can't see. And so 
these little clues give us an indication of the change. The first clue is this idea that he's smaller than everybody. He's shorter than everybody. So only through his money and his influence is he, be, is he big, is he powerful, is he strong. But the way that he is, the truth of his life, is that he's smaller than everyone else. Another indication of who he really is is his name. Zacchaeus means pure or clean. And so his works and what he's doing are like the antithesis or against his true nature. And we also have this idea that we're created in the image of God, that our true nature is actually pure, that the spirit that dwells within us purifies us and makes us pure. When we run away from that or we deny the presence of God in our lives, then that's when we brought, become like very low, as the Agbeya says. The third aspect to perhaps like an indication of his coming change is that he climbs a sycamore tree. And I was like curious about what a sycamore tree is because I've heard it so many times, but I don't know what it is. So I looked it up. Sycamore tree is, there's different kinds of sycamores, obviously, in um, the Middle East where this story happens. A sycamore tree is a tree that gives forth the sycamore fruit, which is like figs. And the sycamore tree is big and tall. And the person that gets this fruit and climbs up the tree and cultivates this fruit is considered the lowliest job that you can do. It's a very dangerous job. And it's a very thankless job. And so Zacchaeus, when he climbed the tree, again, it's an indication of his lowliness his willingness for change, his willingness to go back to the things that he had left, his willingness to be better. And Taban, he doesn't know, he's just doing these things, but we know when we read them. An interesting aspect of this is that the prophet Amos was a cultivator of the sycamore fruit. One time he was speaking with the king at the time of Judah, Amaziah, and Amaziah said, you have no place here, get out of here. This is the place of the king. Angry Taban at Amos for daring to question him and his rule. And Amos answered and said to Amaziah, I was no prophet, nor was I a son of a prophet, but I was a sheep herder and a tender of sycamore fruit. Then the Lord took me as I followed the flock, and the Lord said to me, go prophesy to my people Israel. So again, the idea that the Lord is who, if we give our heart to and ourselves to, makes us who we really are. And so Zacchaeus, after all of these things, the fact that he was so short, the fact that he climbed the sycamore tree, symbolizing his change to go from the most powerful and influential job to the lowest of the low jobs. When the Lord passes by, he looks up and tells the case to come down from the tree. Today, I will visit you and eat with you at your home. Just like he says in Revelation. The open heart of Zacchaeus invites the Lord in. And Taban, the people that were around were angry. First of all, that everyone wanted to be with Christ. Everyone wanted to be there. Everyone wanted to be with him. And we also have this feeling too, that we want to be known by him. We want to be his favorites. We want to be the ones that he focuses on. So when the Lord goes to the chief tax collector's house, the people became so overwhelmed with sadness because not only because he picked him, which seems odd. Why? Of all people. There's poor people here that have been struggling, that have been worshiping God for their whole life with thanksgiving. Why is he going to this person's house? Not only that, is that they weren't even allowed to go. 
it would be against their beliefs and against their feelings and against their Jewishness if they were to sit at this man's house also. It would be wrong. They would be considered outcasts. No one would sit with a publican. It goes against their religion, literally, and it goes against their sensibilities in their life. So Christ, going with this tax collector, Zacchaeus, into his house, eliminates everyone else. It's just him and the Lord. And it says, very quickly, after the gospel says, the people were indignant when they saw it. They all complained, saying, he's gone to be with the guest to a, with a man who is a sinner. Right after that, it says, Then Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Lord, Lord look, Lord, I, have, I give half of my goods to the poor. And if I have taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I restore fourfold. And I remember when I would hear this gospel when I was younger, or I would read it, I would say, like, you kind of like do the math. Like, if he gives half of his goods to the poor, so that's half, and then he restores all the things that he's stolen from people or took without authority, which is all that they did. Like, his riches are all stolen. His money is all stolen. Every single cent is stolen. He had a small wage, and everything extra is the things that they sort of take. So if you do the math, you realize that he gave everything away. He just kept what he needed. Pure and clean change, starting from scratch. And even though the people judged him as the Lord walked into his house, he did the opposite of what he's always done, whereas before he would remind himself, who cares about these peasants? I'm rich, I'm powerful, I have everything I need, I don't care what they think, I'll go into their house and steal from them again. Now, his response to their indignation, how could this be, is, I understand now, the Lord has brought me to what I truly am. And because I've been brought down low by the kindness and humility and love from the Lord, I'm willing to repay that love in kind. And we also do the same. Because there's nothing that we can do to repay the Lord for His great sacrifice for us. As we know, when we ask the Lord, Tab, what can we do in return? You've given me everlasting life. You've given me a place to put all of my cares and worries. You've given me an opportunity to change my life and be better than I could ever imagine. If you think about it, the Lord changes us from mere organisms that are just living to being something way more interesting, way more powerful, way more deep. We're sons and daughters of the Creator. He knows us and we know Him. We don't even know the mayor of Torrance. Oh, I don't know the mayor of Torrance. He doesn't know who I am. But the creator of the universe knows me and I him and created me in his image and gave me so much without expecting anything in return. But when we ask him, what can we give in return? He says, if I've given you love, then you take that love and you give it to others. So Zacchaeus, without ever even hearing a word, accepted the love that the Lord offered to him and gave it to everyone else. And learned a valuable lesson about love and about repentance and about change. And so we can also look within ourselves about this same thing. What is it inside of us that needs change, that requires change? And we all have something. We all have things that keep us in the world. It sometimes is something very serious like addiction for anything that we just can't overcome. And sometimes it's even something that we consider less serious, but it's like our love for the world, our phones, TVs, iPads, all of the things that we're kind of like stuck to that we can't get away from. All of the things that keep us in the world down there 
and not climbing up the sycamore tree to be seen by the Lord and accept him into our house. And so if there's something stopping us, and for me I know, I'm not ignorant of my sins. If there's something stopping me from being connected to the Lord fully, whether it's this, pride, ego, money, the sins of the world, the feeling and our connection to our bodily life instead of our spiritual life, those things we've been stuck with and we are stuck with for so long to the point that some of us think there's no going back now. I can't change. This is who I am. But we can, and this is the story of it. Like I said, when Zacchaeus repented and gave back, he gave back everything. Even though, in hindsight, you might think, well, he needs something for himself. But no, there's nothing else that he needs. The love of the Lord had filled him so completely that there's nothing else left. There's no room for anything else. And we have also been given this great gift. Zacchaeus was given the opportunity to dine with the Lord, but as I said in the beginning, the Lord is offering this to us every second of every day. We don't have to make an appointment. We don't have to wait. We can do it now. The same thing that Zacchaeus appreciated, the love that he's been given, and the salvation that he received, Church tradition says that Zacchaeus became bishop of Caesarea. So he also appreciated and understood the sacrifice that the Lord made on his behalf and changed his life completely and went away from what he was doing so that he could serve the Lord. And so what does that look like? Sometimes we have jobs that are kind of like they don't serve the Lord. What could have Zacchaeus done differently? Since he was the chief publican, the chief tax collector, he had an opportunity, like I said in the beginning, to set the agenda of the tax collectors. He could have said, anyone that needs, we give them out of our own pocket instead of taking away from them more. And we can make a difference and a change in these people's lives. I can give up my love of money and riches and my connection to mammon and I could be the change that's necessary to bring joy in people's lives. With Christ, our whole mind changes. So I can imagine that he probably was still a publican for a little bit after that. But there's no need now to steal. There's no need now to take. There's no need now to intimidate. Only he can bring joy and love and happiness and the word of the gospel. Now he's a changed man. Instead of taking, he gives. Instead of uh, being completely like separated from the people, he joins them in their struggle and their strife. The tax collectors had chosen sides against their own people. Now he becomes one of them again. And so we also, in our repentance, when we show fruits of repentance or willingness to change, and then the Lord touches our hearts and we actually do change fully, then we leave the old things and return back to the original source of love, the original source of what we've always known. And so this is an opportunity today to read the story in earnest and say, if Zacchaeus can give away everything, then so can I. Even if it's something that I feel like is hard to get rid of. Even if it's something that I feel like is hard to change. Even if it's something that I feel like I've been living like this my whole life, how can I change this now? This is my whole being. How can I change it? Well, Zacchaeus did. So I can too. And only through the grace of the Lord and His blessings can we see and truly experience who we really are once and for all. May the Lord give us this gift, that this gift of repentance is utilized. This offering to come and dine in our houses is accepted. Every single minute of every single day We don't shoo out the Lord so that we can fight. We don't kick Him or have Him leave out of our house so that we can argue or be angry or do the illegal things that we're doing. If the Lord comes in, we change. We say, okay, the Lord is here now, so we're going to act as if the Lord is always here. Why would we have Him leave? 
just like Zacchaeus climbed the tree so that he could see him, we have an opportunity to live with the Lord at all times. May the Lord give us this wisdom so that when we invite him in, we keep him with us. We don't shoo him away so that we can continue doing the things that we want to do. And we can actually change. Just like, again, Zacchaeus, even in his repentance, doesn't say, go outside and say, I'm going to give everyone back their money. He tells who? He tells the Lord. He says, look, Lord, are you proud of me? I'm going to give everything back. If I've taken, I'm going to restore fourfold. He's not telling the people. He's telling the Lord. So we have this great opportunity to, to change and tell the Lord, look, Lord, I've changed. I'm better. Come into my house and dine with me and I with you and stay better. Never leave again. And glory be to God forever. Amen. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia.